this family is an embedded plate and it looks like this is coming off of a YouTube video link that he sent to me. Um, and as from what I can tell, it's just, just a standard metal plate. It's got uh, a couple, uh, four prongs here and a cylinder at the end. So let's go ahead and um, show you how to make this in Revit. When we're building something like this, um, I kind of would classify this as a, a stiffener or something like that. So I'd head over to the new under families and look for S for structural and look for say structural stiffener and hit open. We do this so that it's categorized properly so that you can schedule it properly as well. And what you are introduced with is a plan view of two reference planes that define the origin. So you've got one here that says define origins is checked and one over here that define origins is checked. Okay. Now when we build this family, there are several ways to approach it. I'm going to keep it very simple. In the way of looking at this family, you can either build it as a single family that has the plate and the four extensions, which is what I'm going to do, or you can treat this as a single family loaded into this plate family and then arrayed and pushed out so that it can change and adapt in length and height, um, even depth if necessary, and the number of um, extensions. Okay. So for now, we're just going to keep it simple. I'm in a plan view. I want to use the reference plane command to create reference planes for the left and the right side. So I'm just going to place one on the left, right, I'll put one in the back, and I'll put one in the front. Um, when you're creating the reference planes, give them names because you can always refer back to them easier. If you don't name them, you can't see them in a drop down list. And I'm keeping it simple and I'm going quickly just because of time, but the essence and the philosophy is the same. I do have a whole bunch of YouTube videos on family creation already in my YouTube channel that you can go through <clears throat> and it'll walk you through step by step of different um, rules of thumb. So I'm going to place a dimension for the width and the depth. And because my insertion point is the center, if these values change, I want them to grow equally on both sides. So I'm going to use this feature called equality on both sides. And now we know that it's going to be built this way. I'll head over to the front elevation. And typically, you'll see in the front elevation the level that it's referencing. I typically like to move this out of the way because when I do this, you're going to see a reference plane that's created that came with the software. And I'm just going to call this bottom. And then we create a reference plane. You can use RP as a keyboard shortcut to create the reference plane. And then I'm going to click in here and I'm going to put top. Now, um, the insertion point, again, like I said, is here and across here, and it's that insertion point here. You want to think about that insertion point because as things grow and change, it's either going to grow equally left or right, top, up or down, or if you make this the insertion point over here, it's going to grow to the right and grow up. So things like that to think about. Uh, head back over to the front elevation. I'll create a dimension. DI is the keyboard shortcut for using that aligned dimension and place one over here, and that would represent the thickness. Now, when we are dimensioning, we're just dimensioning, but we need to parameterize it, give it intelligence so that the end users can adjust the size if they need to down the road. So here, I'll select that dimension, and I'll click this little icon right here to create the parameter, and I'll give it a name. I'll call it uh, plate underscore thickness. Now, I, don't, I like to use the underscore for spaces. I don't like to leave a space just because of when you're doing formulas, it's a little easier. I'll set as a type parameter so that if you make the change, all the plates of that type will change. The property will be not in the instance property over here. It'll be in the type properties window when you use that feature. <clears throat> so you see it says plate th thickness, and right now it's just a, a, an odd number. So I'll just click and change that to, say, a half inch. Now, because of that, um, let's head over to the front elevation, and let's do the same thing here. I'm going to make this one width, plate, underscore width, and try to be consistent with your naming convention, too, because later, as you get complicated families that you're building, uh, naming convention is going to play a big role, okay, width. Oops, uh, sorry, not width, uh, depth. 
And then again, you can head over here under Family Types window to open that up, and you can change the values here as well. So let's make it um, 4 inches and 4 inches and hit OK. And what's happening is that everything is flexing, everything is adjusting. You can use the scale over here as well to change the scale and change the size of the, of the dimensions and make adjustments. So typically I'd like to pull things down like this. just so we have a better sense of um, getting closer and reading things easier. Oops. And it helps if you have a really good mouse and if you have to zoom in or not. Okay. So we'll just move this in a little bit. And so for the plate, it's nothing more than a rectangular extrusion. So I can head over to the Create tab of the ribbon and use the Extrusion command. Click Extrusion. And use the Rectangular command here and draw a rectangle from that corner to this corner here. You'll get magenta lines that represent the outside faces of that plate. You'll want to lock those lines to those parameter to those uh, reference planes so that when the reference planes move because the dimension changes, these planes will move left and right and therefore these lines will move left and right and it will adapt and change the size of the object itself. I'll finish the shape and you'll see it shows up here. I'll hit SD to shade it. And then <clears throat> we have constrained left, right, top, and bottom, but we have um, front and back, but we have not constrained top and bottom. So you can use these arrows to pull to that plane there and lock it. And again, zoom in and pull that out, pull this in to that plane there and lock it. So now what do we have? If I look at this in 3D, it's just a simple plate. I'll type SD to shade it. And we want to test this. So head over to the Family Types window and change the values. If I make this a foot and I make this a foot and I make this, uh, say, two inches, does everything flex accordingly? And it does. It looks like it does. Okay, so that's kind of a big plate, embedded plate for uh, precast concrete. So I'm going to change the size a little bit. Let's drop it to six inches, drop this to six inches, and drop this to, say, an, an inch thick. And so that's good. That's great. Um, now what we want to do is we want to introduce those extensions. And it's nothing more than a cylinder and a second cylinder that has a cap. But we do want to place them a certain position from the outside edges. And in order to do that, we'll create reference planes that dictate where we want those to be. We can make those uh, locations parametric as well, or we can just kind of lock it down. So let's say, for example, I dimension from this reference plane to this one, and this one to this one. Um, if I want that location to, say, be one inch away, I just do this, and it's one inch. Now, if I want it to hold, I'll lock that dimension. Same thing over here. If I select that plane, I can change this dimension to one inch, take that dimension, and lock it. <clears throat> and I have to do the same thing on the other ones. So remember, when you're dimensioning, Always dimension reference plane to reference plane, not necessarily to the objects themselves. Because the design rule when you're creating families is that dimensions can drive the location of the reference planes, which drive the location of the planes of the objects themselves. So again, we're going to lock this. And now we know that this, these four intersections are set. So I can just start building my cylindrical extrusions. So I'll click Extrusion again. This time I'm going to pick a circle. I'll zoom in a little bit, pick that intersection, and then make it whatever size that I want. Click. Now there is a uh, radius dimension here. I'm actually going to click this icon to turn that into a physical dimension. And then I could take that dimension and I could parameterize that as well if I want to. So let's go ahead and parameterize this as, say, extension underscore radius and as a type property. And then in the family types window, let's force that to be one quarter inch for now and hit OK. And so it controls that, OK? Um, because the text looks really large in this area, I'm going to adjust the scale again. Let's drop it to one and a half. Oh, let's go even further. Let's take it to three inches. There. Now it's a little bit more legible. We'll finish the command, and that extrusion is created. Heading over to the front elevation, you're going to see it's pretty long. It's just thrown in there. Now we need to control the top and the bottom placement of it. 
So the bottom one I can just pull out and I can pull up to that plane and lock it and it stays locked to that plane. I can create a reference plane using RP to create a reference plane here and give this one a name. Let's call it uh, extension end RP. And then I can make that a specific dimension. For example, I can dimension from here to here, place it, select that dimension, and parameterize it. Call it extension length. And I can force that to be whatever dimension I want. So for now, I'm going to make it uh, 4 inches, just to be simple. I can then take this extrusion and pull that edge down to that plane and lock it. Okay. Now what about the um, this little cylinder that's a little fatter or, or larger in diameter and has a little bit of thickness? Same, same principle. So just create a reference plane over here for the top part. <clears throat> let's dimension that. And let's make that a quarter inch thick and let's lock that so it doesn't change in thickness. And then we'll head over to the plan view and again we'll create the cylindrical extrusion and this time we'll make it a little larger like that. We'll parameterize that as well and we'll call this um, outer radius for now. Now, one of the things you might want to consider is the size of this outer radius needs to be a certain th thickness greater than this inner radius here. So in order to do that, um, we head over to the family types window, and you'll see that outer radius is right here. If I just put in a value, say um, a half inch, we know that that's going to work because it's a quarter inch greater than this one. But if we want to make that a relationship to the other one, we can just say, it's going to be equal to the extension underscore radius plus, say, a quarter of an inch, something like that. And that formula will dictate this size right here. So if this is set to, say, one half inch, then this forces it to be three quarters of an inch. Okay. So for now, I'm going to leave this as a quarter inch just because I think size-wise it's okay. Finish it, and that's done. Now heading over to the front elevation, remember we still need to physically move this little piece that we've created, okay? And initially it's not little because remember, uh, it just makes the extrusion. Let's push and pull this end up to that plane and lock it and pull this one down to that plane and lock it. So now we have, if we look at this in 3D, we have one of those bolts. All we need to do now is head over to the plan view and take this object, I'll shade it so you can see it easier, and I'll do a window crossing of this object and I'll mirror it along this axis. And then I'll grab these, oops, sorry, just the objects, and I will mirror them as well along this axis. Now, here's the one thing you have to be careful about. When you're mirroring like this, these other new objects are not aligned and locked to the correct planes. So make sure we use the align and lock command to align them. All right. Um, Let's head over to a 3D view and let's test this. Okay, so I'll head over to the family types window and we'll just make this say six inches, and we'll make this a foot, and hit apply. Do they flex and adjust properly? Yes. What about the other way? If I make this six inches and I make this a foot, does it flex the other way? Ah, see, so I'm off somewhere. This is why we flex. We want to double check that things are set up properly. So we can see off the bat that one of them is not, um, oops, sorry, we adjusted the wrong value. Hold on a second. Let's make the extension length the uh, four inches again, <clears throat> which is good because it, it is also dictating and letting me know that these other ones are not set properly. So I'm going to undo this and let it force it to be a foot. And then I'm going to take this object <clears throat> and I'm going to, um, pull these edges up so they align to that face, uh, to the, align to that reference plane, and same thing here. And we need to do this for this one as well. So if I select this and pull this up and lock it, I could do this on the bottom as well and lock it. And we have one more over here which we can't see very well. Let's go to the, uh, the back elevation and zoom in a little bit 
and it's right there. So if I select it again, I'm going to pull this up to the top reference plane, lock it, and this one as well, and lock it. So now let's look at this in 3D to see if it looks okay. So now let's flex it again. So heading back to the family types window, we'll change this to say six inches and hit apply. Does it adjust? Yes. If we say the depth is a foot and the um, width is a foot and hit apply, it flexes accordingly. So now we know the family is built properly, it's flexing properly. We need to save this, obviously, because we do a lot of work. So try to save often. Don't do as fast as I'm doing right now. Just save it as a family. Place it where you want. I'm going to place it under my temp folder, and we'll call it uh, embed plate. And the last thing you might want to do is you might want to select these objects. So let's do another way of selecting like this. And then over here under materials, you might want to assign a a material parameter to it. So if you select this little box over here, you can click this button over here under the associate family parameter window and say uh, extension underscore material. And if we do it this way, then those objects are assigned. We can do the same thing with this plate. Click in here, create a new material and call it plate underscore material. When we do this, we can actually go to the Family Types window and we can force the extension material to be anything that we want coming from the material library. Maybe we want this out of um, iron. So I'll do a search for iron. And I'll just do wrought iron for now and load that um, material into our current project. And then for the plate material, again, I can go in here and pick something else. Let's pick uh, titanium. Now we know obviously from, from chemistry, uh, you don't want to have two differing materials touching each other, but just for the sake of this example, we can do this. And it will change. It doesn't look like it changes much, but if we switch this to a realistic setting, you can see that it does change a lot. If I zoom in, you can see the wrought iron versus the titanium. Okay, and That's how you build the family. You save it, and then you can load it into the project. So if I start a new project, and I start with, say, structural, I can use control tab to toggle back to that family and then I can click load into project and once it's in it basically starts the component command and then I can place it now this particular family is not face based it's not wall based it's not ceiling based or host based or anything it's just a generic family you can just throw in and put it wherever you want see and once you throw it in there you go if I put in a say a structural column um, right here just so you have context and I put in a beam say going from here to here just so you have some context we look at this in 3D and shade it you can see that that family is there see that and if you select it you can hit the space bar to rotate it but in this case it doesn't look like it's rotating um, and that's it that's how you use a family if you have any concerns or questions, just call or ask for Zon. Um, 